this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about creating a more intuitive or dynamic way of moving around this image plane. Right now, the only way of doing it is selecting it. And by the way, speaking of selecting it, when I'm selecting the image plane, I'm actually selecting the front view camera. I'm not actually selecting the image plane, because the image plane is a child of the camera. Now, what I, if I wanted to select the image plane, I have to go to the image plane 2 tab and click select. Now, as you can see by the yellow outline around it, it is now the actually selected object, not the camera it's being projected from. Okay, back to what I was saying. Right now, selecting it, regardless of whatever you have selected, the move tools and the scale tools don't work. The only way of moving it, using these values here under placement in the attributes editor. That's not very intuitive. I'm going to be creating a rig that allows us to scale it and move it using the scale and move tools in the scene. So we're going to start off by creating a measurement, uh, well, getting a measurement. We're going to go to Create, Measure Tools, Distance Tool. And also, if you'll notice, I turned on Snap to Grid. That way it'll snap to exactly the spot I want. I want it to be snapping to the center of the scene, or the origin. So I click about where it should be, and Maya snaps it right there for me. Now I want to snap it to the right side, right on the border edge of this image. So, there we go. Going back to Select Tool and back to Perspective View. So now I have this value 15, which is half the width of this image plane. I want to create an expression, or a small piece of code, which says Im this image plane's width equals this value times 2, which would be 30, and that also just so happens to be the current image plane's width. So now to create the expression, I'm going to start off by shortening this item's name. Right now, this little distance node thing is called distance dimension shape one. A little too long, so I'm just going to shorten it to distance. Now then, let's shorten to distance. The attribute we want to connect this to is distance, which is this attribute we see here, 1515. 15. Now we're going to go back to our image plane. right click over width and click create new expression now the first thing we're going to do let's paste this in here temporarily I'm going to select the text in image plane 2 dot width and just copy that out copying and pasting is easier and I want to equal distance cut that and the value I want to connect to which we define with a little period distance so the, here's the name of the item and followed by a period, followed by the value we want to make the connections with. So it's image plane with value equals distance, distance value. And last but not least, we need a times the distance value times two because it's half. So I'm just going to do asterisk symbol two. That means times two. Now I'm going to click create. And the expression has been created. Now, if I was to move this, Turn off snap to good now. It scales dynamically, but if I move it too large, it stops. This is happening because, go back to the image plane, these two values don't equal the same value. So I'm going to write another expression to make that happen. I'll right click over height, click create new expression, image plane height, copy and paste it out of here, drop it in here, and make it equals, paste it again, and width. create and now it's dynamically scaling with the position of the locator. As this value gets larger, it gets larger. Now we're going to start on position. So if I open the outliner, if you'll remember we created two locators to measure the distance from. The first one's at the center of the scene. Now it's called locator one. We need to make it the parent of locator two. So we're going to select locator two and then locator one and go to edit parent. Now, locator 1 is a parent node, and locator 2 is a child node. So if I was to select locator 1 and scale it, locator 2 will move proportionally, so we can also scale our image plane along with it. Now, if we want to make this, what we really want to do is we want to connect locator's one position with, locate, I mean with the image plane's center, which also is its position. We're going to use connections. Like expressions, they connect two values together, but no code is required. 
So I'm going to select the image plane. I mean, actually, no, I'm going to select the locator and go to Window, General Editors, Connection Editor. It's already loaded the locator in the left side. That means it will connect something from this side to something from that side. So the value from here will be transferred to the value over here, left to right. Now I'm going to select our image plane, not the camera, the image plane. So I have to go over to the image plane tab and click select and click reload right. It will now put the, all the image plane's attributes over here. The two attributes we care about are translate and center. They're both the same attribute. So the center of the image plane, which is exactly where the locator is, should equal the value of the locator translation, so where it is in the world. So I'm going to click Translate and Center. Now that they're connected, I select the locator and move or scale it. The image plane moves with it. Much more intuitive. And since we won't be needing locator 2 or our distance node again, we're going to hide them by going to display hide, hide selection. And now we can use our locator to position our blueprints as we desire. In the next tutorial series I'll be talking about file formats and finishing up this tutorial series. So thanks for watching this tutorial.